guys, I'm so excited that you're here today. My name is Tyler Long, and I have the incredible honor of being the executive pastor here at Bloom. We are in the middle of a series right now called Cupid Needs a Little More Ammo, where we are laying down the foundations of love, right? <laughs> Who all's been enjoying this series so far? Yeah. So powerful, right? So powerful. And today I want to talk about a topic that I think a lot of people think is just for single people, purity. But I want to challenge that mindset, and I want to talk about purity within a marriage. And I'll interject this real quick. If you are single in here, this message is still for you. I think it's a very common misconception that, well, if I'm stumbling uh, or struggling with any kind of sexual impurity, when I get married, it won't be a struggle anymore. But I'll tell you that marriage does not hide sin. Marriage reveals sin. And so it is so important to build these healthy foundations and focus on these principles right now so that when you do enter into a covenant with your, with your God and with your future spouse, it is so healthy because you've already worked so hard on those principles. Amen? Amen. So let's dive in. Let me ask you this. Whether you're married or you're not, Anyone in here, when you do get married, does anyone in here plan on having an affair? Please don't raise your hand. Please, please do not raise your hand. <laughs> does anyone in here plan on getting addicted to pornography? Or what about an emotional affair? Like maybe you're not gonna go all the way, but you're gonna have some, some inappropriate conversations and, and give your heart to someone else? No. None of us have those plans, right? And if you do, we can talk later outside because that is it's terrible. But no one has those plans. But would you believe the statistics say that well over half, closer to 75% of marriages will experience at least one or more of those three things that I just listed. 75% will experience one or more of those things. Just to put that in perspective, that's three out of every four couples in this room. But today, church, we are going to learn how to defeat those odds, amen? Listen to what it says in Hebrews. It says, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. What the scripture is saying is that purity matters to God and purity matters in your marriage, amen? And so would you all get this statistic real quick? In the years of, of 19... 98 to 2008, they did a study. The University of California did a study. And in just one decade, in 10 years, the amount of Americans that were committing adultery increased by over 50%. This shows that this is a problem. This shows that we need to be talking about this, right? And so what I wanna dive into is this question here. Why is impurity increasing in marriages? Why is impurity increasing in marriages? And I think for a couple reasons, but there are a few that are worthy of talking about. Number one, write this in your notes. Because there are more temptations today. Because there are more temptations today. And just to go through a couple, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, maybe you, maybe you friend an old boyfriend or an old girlfriend on there and just something just starts naturally. Or maybe you get friended by a guy or friended by a girl and they start direct messaging you or sliding into the DMs as the kids say these days, right? Like, I, t I totally just aged myself there. <laughs> but would you believe, church, that there are apps 100% fully devoted to helping you successfully and secretly cheat on your spouse? Apps fully devoted, like y'all know the weather, like I can't even get an accurate weather app, but you've got secret affair society apps out there that are helping people secretly cheat. And what's crazy is you can go to the online classifieds now to find a prostitute, just as easy as it is to find lawn care or a handyman or something like that. But I think one of the biggest game changers in this area has been these, phones. The smartphones, the tablets, the laptops now, they're so, they're so tiny. Like, when I was younger, 
If you wanted to look at inappropriate things, like you always had that one friend who had a dad who had like a secret stash that, you know, you had to like covert ops, like go sneak in and pull it. And I don't have any experience with this. (laughs) But, (laughs) or like, you know how everyone had one computer back there. Like the computers were like this big, like kids don't know what I'm talking about right now, but they were like this big and they were always conveniently located in the family room, right? Hooked up to that dial up, like, (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But now you have 24 hour access right here. The craziest thing is you can do it discreetly. This is such a problem. And while we're on the topic of pornography, would you guys believe this fact? 47% of American homes say that pornography is a problem within the home. 47% of homes say that there is a problem with pornography in the home. Statistics go on to say that pornography increases your chances of marital infidelity by 300%. Church, this is a problem. And what a better place to talk about this than right here in the church, amen? Amen. So why else is impurity increasing? Write this in your notes. There's a growing sense of entitlement. Well, if I want it, I'm going to get it. And if I'm not getting it in my marriage, then I'll get it somewhere else. Well, if, if she's not meeting my needs, then I'm justified at going and looking at this because it makes me feel better. Or if he's not meeting my emotional needs, then I'll go find someone at work that will, right? Because God wants me happy. I deserve to be happy, right? Does that sound right? No, that's not right. What that is is that's bowing down to the false god of happiness, And can I tell you, church, that you will never find true joy and true happiness if it is not of God. Amen? Amen. So let's discuss today how we're going to stay pure in our relationships. And I want to talk about two different types of purity today. I want to talk about inward purity and outward purity. So write this in your notes. Number one, outward purity. This is the behavior. This is the behavior. Listen to what it says in Ephesians. It says, but among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity. Did you see what it says there? It says not even a what? A hint. What is impurity? Basically, impurity is poison. And you don't want any kind of poison in your marriage, right? Not a hint. And can I tell you, I'm not just talking about having sex with someone that's not your spouse. Although that's a big hint, that's not the only one. Right? Like looking at pornography, that's a hint. Dressing provocatively, that's a hint. Ladies, I'm sorry, but watching Magic Mike and lusting, that's a hint. Looking at inappropriate magazines, that is a hint. Listen to what it says in Proverbs. Proverbs 5.8 says, keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. Stay far away from the hints. And 1 Corinthians goes on to say it like this. It says, flee from sexual immorality. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Notice it doesn't say dabble in it. Dip your toe in the water and then mosey off. But it says, flee from sexual immorality. Run as fast as you can because it is poison. And it will catch up. And it will destroy. But I love the part where it says this. It says, you are not your own. Have you ever heard someone say, well, it's my body and I'll do whatever I want? And that might be true if you're of this world, but when you're a follower of Jesus, it changes everything. Amen? You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Jesus actually said it this way. He said, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. He said, if your right arm causes you to sin, cut it off. And he's not being literal here. Like, please don't go cut your arm off. Like, he's not being literal. But what he is saying is, you must create healthy boundaries in your marriage. Write that in your notes. You must create healthy boundaries in your marriage. For example, fellas, where are the fellas at? Where are the fellas at? Yeah. These are just a few that I choose to live by. But for example, I am never alone with another girl without my wife. Never alone. Uh, I I choose not to counsel girls without my wife. If some girl emails me or texts me about a personal issue, my wife is always brought in to the conversation. Facebook messages, 
texts, all those things from the opposite sex are never secret. And that's the big key word there, secret. They are never secret. And my wife has all my passwords. She can get into my phone, my Facebook, my email, anything she wants at any time. But I think one of the most important ones that I've set up is I've set up a foundational piece of accountability partners in my life. That if I'm going through something or if I feel like I'm gonna stumble or struggle with something, I know that I could call them at any time and they would pray for me and be with there for me and fight for me for, for getting through whatever I know that I'm going to struggle with. And that's why we encourage community, right? So ladies, where are all the ladies at? <laughs> See, I saw, I'm gonna pick on y'all real quick. I saw y'all when I was going through the guys, y'all were like nudging your husbands, like get that one, Terry, like write that down. I saw that. <laughs> but, but I can say that all of these apply to you as well. Can I say that it is so healthy and there is something so powerful when you and your spouse sit down together and you create boundaries for your marriage together. There is something so powerful in that. You must create healthy boundaries. Pastor Craig Rochelle says it like this. He says, why resist a temptation tomorrow that you can eliminate today? Why resist a temptation tomorrow that you can eliminate today? This isn't my take home, but it's a pretty good one. Start today. Go home, sit down with your wife, and create those healthy boundaries. Amen. It is so, so, so important. Don't set yourself up for failure. Prepare yourself for success. Amen? Amen. And I want to interject this, though, about boundaries. Boundaries are so, so, so important. Like, I really want you to get the importance of boundaries. But I will say this. You can't fully rely on rules to protect your marriage. You can't fully rely on rules to protect your marriage. It, listen, if someone wants to cheat, at the end of the day, they will find a way to do it. Boundaries are 100% necessary if you are gonna have a thriving, successful marriage. But at the end of the day, they are just rules. And you can't fully rely on rules to protect your marriage. So this is what brings me to my next point, my next type of purity. This is the type of purity that affects your outward purity. This is number two, it's inward purity. This is the heart. See, we don't have the strength alone to be outwardly pure. We have to get it somewhere else. We have to get it from God. Listen to what it says in Psalms. Psalms 119 says this, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my, what? Heart. Do not let me stray far from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, David is pointing out something very profound here. What he's saying is the closer I get to God, the more he changes my heart. And the more he changes my heart, the less attracted I am to the sin that used to draw me in. The heart matters, amen? Listen to what it says in Matthew. It says, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his, what church? Heart. This is why we stress the importance of getting into life groups, of going to church together, of praying together, because it all affects the heart. Amen? And what I want you to get deep into your spirit tonight is this. Purity is less about not doing something and way more about doing something. Purity is less about not doing something but way more about doing something. And let me explain. What I mean by that is this. Purity is less about not looking at this or not doing this or anything like that, but it's way more about positioning your heart and your spirit in a place with God where that's not even appealing to you because it's not honoring to God, it's not honoring to your spouse, and therefore it's not honoring to you and your heart. Amen? And unfortunately, we're all sinners. We're not perfect, right? I know I've stumbled in this area too many times. And unfortunately, some of you likely will as well. <clears throat> I know I've relied on 1 John 1, 9 more times than I would like to admit, where it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And this leads me to the last thing that I wanna talk about. When there is sin and there is a stumble, and a struggle. There are three common responses to impurity. 
Three common responses to impurity. Write this in your notes. Number one, defensiveness. Well, that's just the way guys are wired. Or, well, it's not my fault, it's genetics. Or if she would do this, then I wouldn't have to do this. Or, well, we're just friends and my spouse is overreacting. Right? If someone is acting like that, they're most likely trying to hide some sort of self-rationalized sin. You have to drop your guard and you have to let the spirit of God speak through and get over defensiveness. Amen? And number two, I'll write this in your notes, there is remorse. I'm so bad. I can't believe I got caught. I'm a failure. I will never get it right. I'm embarrassed. But number three, and I feel like this is the real response to impurity, but number three, there is repentance. There is repentance. This one here, this is, I've sinned. God, heal me. Transform me. I don't want to live like this anymore. God, heal me. And this connects to my take home. If you're in here today and you're affected by anything that we've been talking about today, this take home is for you. Maybe your marriage is hanging on by a thread right now. This take home is for you. Maybe you're an individual struggling right now and you yourself are hanging on by a thread right now. This take home is for you. Repent and don't give up the fight. Listen to me, church. You can't fully restore your marriage until you yourself have been fully restored through the love and through the mercy of Jesus Christ. Amen? Here's what you have to get into your spirit. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. Can I tell you, church, I don't know what you came in here with today, but I know that we serve a God that can make sure that you don't leave here carrying that same baggage, amen? You have to not give up the fight. Listen to what it says in, in Galatians here. Can you pull up Galatians? Yeah, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Can I tell you, church, that the harvest is the testimony? The harvest is that marriage and breaking the chains, having that successful marriage that you either used to have or that you always prepared on having. And if you are a struggling individual in here right now, I want you to remember the verse that Pastor Matt shared a couple weeks ago, Second Chronicles, it says this. It says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will restore their land. Church, I fully believe that there are some people in here that need their land restored. I believe that there are some people in here today that need to repent from their sins and that need a safe place to say, God, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've been struggling with that stuff and I'm done. I don't want to do it. I'm done with my old ways. Again, I don't know what you came in here with today, but I know we serve a God that can make sure that you don't walk out carrying that same stuff. I know it. Remember, purity is about action. Purity is about action. And that's all that the Bible calls for, for us to receive the free gift of God's grace. Amen? If you want to be on the pathway to restoration, then I challenge you to make that take home come true in your life. Repent and don't give up the fight. And we're going to give you that opportunity right here, right now. So all across the room, if you would, would you just bow your heads and close your eyes? And repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the grave. And I believe that your sin, or that your blood, washes away all of my sins. Come be a part of my life. Today I commit my life to you. I am chosen. I am forgiven, I am loved, and I matter. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you just flood the hearts and the minds of everyone in this room. Anyone that's struggling, God, I pray that you give them the courage to take this step and begin the healing and the restoration in their life in the name of Jesus. And if you were in this room and you made that commitment for the first time, or maybe you're rededicating your life to Jesus, I'm gonna ask you to do something really bold here in just a second, and I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. 
And I do that for two reasons. The first reason is because I want that visual. I wanna see you raise your hand because I wanna be praying for you in this new journey with Jesus. And the second reason is because this is your moment. This is your time to declare, I am done with my old ways. I'm done living with any sin. And God, I am ready to live out the calling that you have called me to live. And so if that was you in this room tonight, I want you to boldly raise your hand on the count of three. One, no looking around. Two, this is your time. Be excited, be courageous. And three, if that was you in this room, get your hands up. I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand. Anybody else, I see your hand over there. Anybody else, anybody else? Come on church, let's celebrate. Amen. Amen. If you made that commitment today, and maybe you didn't even raise your hand, but if you made that commitment today, we want to give you a free gift. No strings attached. It's this book called Following Jesus, and it just helps with some next steps in this new journey of yours. Church, can we celebrate one more time? Come on. Man, we are so glad you joined us. Didn't Pastor Tyler bring a powerful message? And listen to me, if you gave your heart to Jesus, you can give your heart to Jesus anywhere. And if you prayed that prayer, your God heard your prayer. And I am so incredibly excited to welcome you to my family of faith. You are forgiven, you are chosen, and you are loved. And we would love to hear about it. Please message us, shoot us an email, put up that hand raised emoji because we would love to contact you and say welcome to the family. And if you'd love one of those free resources, just let us know. We'd love to get one of those in your hands. And also, if you still want to worship God with your giving, have that opportunity at bloomhere.org slash give, or you could text whatever amount to the five digit number listed below. Man, we had a wonderful, wonderful time worshiping God on our six year anniversary, and we can't wait to see you back next week. I pray God's peace.